this to you. The church should be the lead advocate on behalf of unborn babies, not the Republican Party. The church should be the lead advocate on behalf, on behalf of black lives, immigrants, migrants, Asians, Latinos, and the poor, not the Democratic Party. It should be the church. It should be us, brothers and sisters. That is our thing to fight for. That is our thing to fight for. We happen to live in a country that has a two-party system. God is not about that. Jesus wouldn't have been in either. The kingdom of God is a theocracy. He is our king. We are to be about womb to tomb justice. So I'll, let, I'll let you start just like you were reading and studying in Amos before we started to before we started to write. So like what were you studying and what scriptures were you bringing in to that writer's night? Yeah, so I had spent nine weeks studying the book of Amos and, I mean, really digging deep into his symbolism and all the things that he meant through his scripture and learning that scholars deemed him a social justice prophet and you know, historically the people of God would have been um, disciplined, punished, whatever word you want to use, by God for their idolatry, but here they were being taken to task for their social injustice, all while they were ignoring, uh, pointing fingers at others and ignoring what was going on in their own heart. So when I came in to the writer's night that night, I had uh, also, after listening to some of Dr. King's speeches, and then also seeing the scripture quoted everywhere in this season, but I feel like maybe not misquoted, but not understood to its full capacity. Amos 5.24, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like, it, like an ever-flowing stream. God's desire to pour out his spirit on those who realize that justice and righteousness go together. And then how do we even operate in that? Go back to verse 14 and 15. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. All within a culture that was just teeming with tension from racial injustice that just seems to be a boiling point that I hope we never go back. I mean, I hope we don't turn back from this and ignore this moment we have in history. Yeah, and I kind of, I was at a place where I had been studying a lot, reading a lot, whatever, and have been for a while, but I was kind of coming into the writer's room from a spot where I didn't know how I was going to be able to write about anything other than the idea of justice Same. and social justice. So as soon as we walked in, I obviously I was in charge of the writer's night, whatever. So I split up all the groups and kind of just put myself with my mom because I knew where she had been in scripture. And I knew that it would lead us to a place of writing about the idea of social justice. Um, I, and I think probably the biggest challenge that we had in that in that writer's room was focusing still on writing a song that was corporate and had an aspect of corporate worship in it um, and not just like being angry and yeah. frustrated. The seams of the world are tear. Maybe the tide Cause the God who is bringing down hell Can't be happy with the Yeah, I remember that day saying to your dad, my husband, saying to, to Brent, like, I don't know if I can go to this writer's night because I can't get my mind out of the space of lament over injustice. And in the study of theology and allowing the word and God to inform my feelings and inform actually defining somewhat of how I'd felt my whole life. Um, even as a little girl, knowing that I don't know how to put words to this, but something inside of me wants to do something. And when I studied the scripture and it began to inform, oh, this is, this is like my call. Like I have, I've have got to be a voice. I've got to use my voice. I've got to, to, um, 
preach this message or live this message that as the gospel informs, or for us, as songs are little mini sermons. I mean, songs should be mini sermons. They should be full of theology that, that teach us what the Word of God is saying. And then in this season, I wanted us to, all I knew is that we needed to have some song that spoke the truth, but had this almost, um, I mean, I remember us sitting there saying, is this kind of like, ooh, you know, how can you hate your brother? But then there was this sneaky bridge of, okay, now wait a second. It's not just about pointing fingers. It's about God, fix what's fractured and mend what's broken deep inside of me. Because it's got to start with me individually as we have a corporate expression for unity in the earth. I believe it is absolutely the call of God and the good news of the gospel. I see it everywhere in the life of Jesus that he, I think we've been saying, saying this as of recent, he drew a line in the sand and he stepped on the side of that line with the marginalized one and said, if you're going to throw the stone, you're going to have to hit me first. And I think the call for us to lament and repent, reflect and allow God to redeem things is a humble posture for the Christian, for the singer, for the worshiper. I think, I think the importance of a song like this is reflected in the response of the people who sing it. So, like, it's important that we that we give a voice in worship to people's to people's grievances and that make people feel seen, while also reflecting the heart of the Father and bringing glory to the Father. And really, something that I began to consider is there's there's obviously traditionally been a lot of debate about like what you should sing about in church yeah what what it, what warrants corporate worship and like the traditional stance of largely the white church has been to only sing songs about like the character of God and worshiping God and not necessarily the personal or societal implications of that um, then the the perspective has been that once you get into that you're beginning to distort what worship is in the church and really what I began to think was whether you agree or you disagree with that only a person from a place of white privilege has the ability to say I'm not going to think about where I sit in society in moments of worship because you're in a place where it doesn't affect your day to day life but so, of course, it was easy for the white church to not sing about ideas of societal implications and social justice because it would directly affect their position in society. And the reason it's important to sing songs about social justice and sing songs about um, the societal implications of the gospel is because it gives a voice and a picture into the reflection of the kingdom of God on the earth, especially in the lives and the hearts of those who have been oppressed and marginalized. Fix what's fractured, deep inside my heart, deep inside my heart.